Hello, hello. Happy holidays. Episode 22, Facebook Live, Elevate. In the arena, in the arena. I'm trying to trying to get on here. Um, having some technical difficulties. All right. How you doing over there, Shar? You on? All right, I'm trying to get it so where I can see. 702, running about a minute or so behind. Trying to uh, see if we have a few people on. Hello. How's everybody doing? I'm trying to make sure I see these comments. So, uh, oh, Aunt Stephanie's on Pflugerville. All right, Pflugerville. Happy holidays. Uh, trying to do a little different setup today. Um, trying to use a, a different way to communicate with you guys. See a, see a few people on. Um, definitely want to uh, thank you for coming on today. Appreciate your time. Um, uh, we got Shar over there. I don't think she's going to be on camera today. Uh, we got Kai up here looking at me. Uh, he's like, oh, I got to come on camera now. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got Kai over there on the honor roll again. Congratulations. So um, definitely want to. We always say this is our our fastest thirty minutes in social media. I want to know who else we got on today. Who else we got on today? Let's see here. Uh, I used to wonder why uh, those radio shows had an engineer because it's hard to talk and try to go through and, and do uh, the other stuff. So I see why now. But uh, right now I'm going to try to do it so I can see the comments. Let's see here. If you bear with me. We're going to go to... Um, uh, I'm not able to see the comments, Char. Let's see. Let's, no, they're not coming on the laptop for sure. So basically, well, you can see we're in the Christmas spirit here, and uh, we're trying to uh, get everything going. So, and it's funny because I tested all this stuff out. Well, I didn't test this part out, so maybe that's why I'm having issues. But I can definitely uh, want to start off. We got a, uh, we have a, uh, we're going to start off first with the jokes like we normally do. We're going to start off with the jokes since we're five minutes in. Uh, who else we got out there? Who else we got out there? Do you want to use my phone since you can? Yeah, I need to see the comments. Yeah. Maybe you're not set up right. Here's my mom without a wig. <laughs> hey, why don't you just use mine? Because I don't know what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Look at uh, Aunt Sister on there. My parents are on there. Okay. Can we? So, uh, I want to start with the jokes you today. Right here. You want, you want okay. Back? I need. I need to get going. Oh. So let me. Let me. Okay. I got. I can read yours. Okay. So, uh, I want to start off with the jokes today. You got number one here. We're gonna do three jokes real quick. What do you call a funky car? What do you call a funky car? Kai, thinking. Kai's thinking. Shar, what do you call a funky car? Anybody? Our sister says she can hear us. It's good to see our sister on. What do you call a funky car, guys? Everybody out there? Any guesses? Any guesses? A Mustang. A Mustang. <laughs> That's what you call a funky car. I got a I got a half giggle from from Kai and nothing from Shar. How do billboards talk? How do billboards talk? 
uh, Aunt Sister said, stinky. How do billboards talk? Char, Kai, they use sign language. No laugh? No. He got a smile. He got a smile. They use sign language. You get it? Sign language, a billboard. All right, all right. Last one. Last one. How much does a millennial weigh? How much does a millennial weigh? Uh, Stephanie. I think I know. Char? Char is like all the way in the other room. It's like. Aunt Stephanie got the sign language one right. How much does a millennial weigh? An Instagram. They weigh an Instagram. You get it? <laughs> I got the dirty look from Kai. I, I got the dirty look. I was going to stay if the joke was good. Was anyway, he said he was going to stay if the jokes was good. He's gone because he didn't like the jokes. He, he'll grow into those jokes. One day he'll think back on them and laugh. So definitely wanted to uh, thank you guys for coming on. Aunt Linda, hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you. Oh, I got comments now. So this is a beautiful thing when you got the comments. Aunt Sister liked jokes. So um, definitely want to thank you for coming on. Uh, this is the 22nd episode of Facebook Live uh, in the arena. Is this what we're going to be discussing today? I know most of you guys know me. And remember, this is this, this recorded. So future uh, people in the future will be watching these and so I, I always do the introductions. I'm Curtis Carr. I'm with, I'm with Elevate. I'm the founder of Elevate. Um, it's a leadership company. Me and my wife run the company. Elevate is an acronym. Expectations, leadership, ethics, vision, attitude, temperaments, and effectiveness. And basically we're consultants. What we do is we go into uh, companies and help them scale. We also work with individuals to um, teach them leadership techniques. I'm trying to get the glare off my glasses here. We also work with them with leadership techniques to, to uh, speed up the process and getting things done, helping them reach where they want to be. So um, uh, I've been with the, doing leadership for over 30 years in a training capacity uh, for 15. Uh, my wife been in project management and business analyst for over 10 years and she runs her own company. And uh, so we decided to branch out and do something that we feel like we know we can make a major impact on. Um, and, and right now, uh, the leadership team is my wife and I, and what we do is do, we do these lives, uh, every Wednesday at seven o'clock and we make sure that we get you out by seven thirty. So the pressure's on me cause I felt like we lost some time here. All right. Um, we're a consulting agency. We consult for the individual and those are individuals that are looking for personal development or business development also for new and existing leaders. Um, that are trying to learn uh, how to lead more effectively. Maybe you've been a leader for a while, but you're spinning your wheels a little bit. I guarantee you it won't take long. We can work with you and see what you're doing and, and we can help you speed up the process. Uh, we're also uh, working with business owners that are looking to increase the sales and increase market share and to reach that ultimate destiny of being an independent owner uh, or owner independent, I should say. And then we also try to work with the people that are already in leadership capacity. They just want somebody to come in and help train their, their people. Um, we do that also. And we, we use a business program we call, a business training program we call Elevate. Uh, so how do we do it? We start off with, with questionnaires and we do assessments so that we can get to know you. And then those are very helpful because we can understand what we're working with and the questions are very vital. Uh, so it's important that you're honest, be transparent, and we can help get you there. So any questions so far? I know that's just the introductions. Uh, I see Aunt Stephanie said she didn't get that joke. Uh, uh, no, Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Martha, Aunt Sister said that she didn't get that joke. Uh, I think it's the last one. But it's recorded, so you can always go back and check it out. Uh, Shara is over there. Uh, I guess she's the sound engineer uh, helping me because I had some issues coming on. But definitely, if you if you uh, if you if you can hear us right now, please respond by putting one because it's kind of I don't see much going on on the comments right now. So if you could please put a one down, and let me know that. You hear us. And that was. Yeah, my wife's like I dropped her phone. She said, "Shoot, I need to use her phone, my phone, and tear my own phone up." 
So uh, if you if you uh, if you can hear us, let us know. I got some ones from Aunt Stephanie, Aunt Linda. Just put a one down and let us know that you're out there and you can hear me. A little different setup. I had some uh, with the cameras. We're trying to get something that is a little bit more clear and a, a better better focus. So hoping this wakes. If you like this image, please put a one down. If you like this image, as far as the uh, it's supposed to be a wider picture. I'm using a laptop instead of the phone. So if you like this image, if you say, hey, you don't like it, put a two. And then what I'll do is probably switch back to using the phone. Uh, but uh, our, our sister said, are we okay? Because I dropped the phone and I hit the bell. Because at first I was going to ring the bell and say we have a special announcement. And that was going to be for the jokes, but I'll save that for next week. My wife hates the bell. She hates the bell. So in the arena is really what I want to discuss today. It's a, uh, a powerful topic. Uh, and what we try to do is make sure, as I go through this paperwork here, what we try to do is make sure that we give you something impactful, something that you can, uh, that leaves, that stays on the mind, something that you can take with you. And then these are like little seminars. These are like little seminars. Now we also, uh, try to give you something. I try to change it up every once in a while. We don't want to, uh, we have coming up, we have a, a live interview with an entrepreneur, which I'm really excited about that. That's about three weeks away. A uh, interview with an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur. So I wanted to talk a little bit because the question today, the question I want to ask you guys is this, the, 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 uh, today's session is called in the arena. And the question is, are you in the arena? Are you a person that is making things happen in an area that you feel really passionate about? Is there an area that you feel really passionate about and you can say, you know what? Instead of criticizing, I'm a person that's in that arena making things happen. And you know, that can cover a lot of things. You can be passionate about children and you can be working and volunteering and helping with children or you can be working in the field getting paid. It doesn't matter if it's volunteer or not, but are you in the arena? Or are you a person that's sitting on the sideline and it's more of a critic, kind of sitting back saying, hey, you need to do this, they need to do that, this ain't right, this ain't right. Or are you a person that's actually in the arena? Think of it like in the old uh, uh, Roman days where they had those big arenas and everybody stood in the stands and they were cheering and then, then the, the gladiators would come out into the field and fight. Are you that person that's out there fighting? Or are you that person that's in the stands? So I'm gonna wait a second. And uh, if, if you're the person that's out there fighting, you're in the arena doing what you're passionate about, please put a one down. I'm going to give you about two minutes to respond. Please put a one down. If you feel like you're still searching or you're not in the arena, maybe you're still searching, you're not sure where your passion lies, but uh, you know that you know, you're, not, you're not actively involved or you're confused, put a two down. So... I'm going to wait a couple minutes for you guys to respond. Uh, Aunt Stephanie said she's in the arena. Uh, that's awesome. I know she's doing too. She's in the arena. Aunt Sister said she's in the arena. You know, and there's no, of course, there's no wrong answer on this. You know, we just, we like to get the interaction. We like to see what's out there. And, you know, this is also good for people that view this in the future. Uh, We're missing a few of our, our regular people today. I just thought about it. I just thought I looked up there and I saw a few of our regular people missing there. But Aunt Linda said uh, two. And like I said, there's no wrong answer. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of the backstory here. Uh, the way Elevate formed, the way Elevate formed was I was in a uh, uh, getting back into the restaurant business and and I had was in a uh, running stores before and and I stepped away so when I got back they really wanted me to prove myself and show that I was a guy that can handle a unit and they said if you can help the guy that's running this unit be successful then we'll give you your own unit so I said oh okay 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 so we, we go in and we open a couple stores and um, we finally get to the, the, the last store where this guy is going to be staying and I was I was an assistant I was supporting him and we needed about 30 some people. I want to say 36, 37 people. And we only had 20, 23 or 24. 
Uh, all of us worked every every day. Uh, we got a week. We got a day off every three weeks, every three to four weeks, because we didn't have enough people for the managers to take time off. So we we took a uh, it was uh, another assistant, myself, and then of course the store director, and we would take a, a day off every three weeks. So what what happened was we we uh, we had some talented people. We didn't have enough of them, and they knew that we didn't they didn't have we didn't have enough. So they would sometimes take advantage of that. And I was like, man, I, I had, I was a member of this church and at the beginning of service, they had altar call or, or altar prayer, I should say. It was altar prayer. And I would go up to the, everybody would go up to the altar and pray for things that they really were seeking God about. So what I did is I went up there and I was just frustrated because every day, you know, we're getting our, our uh, getting, getting killed. We don't have enough help. And I said, man, if just the people that were there would just elevate, we'll be okay, even if we're shorthanded. And at the time, everything, uh, the church I was going to, everything in that, in the ministry, every ministry had an acronym. So when I said elevate, the first thing that thing was like a ding in my head. I go back to the seat and I start writing down E and what that could stand for and L and what that could stand for. And then eventually I ended up putting together a, le a leadership training program. And then I went to my supervisor and said, hey, if I did a leadership, would you allow me to do a leadership training program on Saturdays? It would be voluntary. It wouldn't cost you anything. I'm salary anyway. What do you think? And he said, well, shoot, it ain't going to cost me anything. Go ahead. So what we did is we did a leadership training program. And at that point, that's when I became a person that was in the arena. I was passionate about this. I didn't care about the money so much. I just wanted to solve the problem. I knew long term we weren't, we weren't going to win if we kept operating like this. We had, some, we had a great leadership team. We just didn't have enough help, and the few people that we had that was helping us, uh, a lot of them weren't misfocused. So, hey, uh, Miss Shante, it's good to see Miss Shante on. Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you on. Uh, so that's that's my story and why how Elevate started. So I just wanted to give you a little background of that so you can kind of understand how it started. And then from then on, we went to businesses, and I, t I talked about how we went to some uh, the, to the Urban League, did some work for them. Also went to some churches, went to some commuter companies, uh, went to some youth facilities, and just did other training, did uh, other trains with other restaurants. And then I put it away for a while. Life started kicking my butt. I put it away for a while, and now it's back, and then we're going full, full, uh, full blast uh, now. So that's where we are with that. So in the arena is about something that Theodore Roosevelt said, and he said this back in 1910. Uh, uh, is one of his most popular speeches ever. Uh, and you got to remember, this is old, so bear with me. It's 1910, April 23rd. He's le he left office in 1909. He spent uh, a year out hunting in Central Africa before embarking a tour where he went and gave speeches and stuff in North Africa and in Europe. And at that time, uh, he had visited uh, Cairo, Berlin, uh, Naples, Oxford, and then at this point, when he gives this speech, he's in Paris. So the speech is actually called Citizenship in the Republic. But the part that became so popular was a part where he talked about being in the arena. So the name actually, you know, became the speech actually became known as in the arena. But it was actually called the Citizenship of the Republic. So Shate, no worries. Shate says sorry for being late. No worries at all. You, we ain't even started yet. You just missed the jokes. So hopefully you can go back and check out the jokes. So, so during this speech, in addition, uh, he talked about his own family history. He talked about the war. Uh, uh, he talked about human and property rights and responsibilities of citizenship, and um, you know some the some of the issues that France was having, and and he really railed against cynics. He railed against cynics who looked down at men who were trying to make the world a better place. And one thing he said was very powerful. He said, the poorest way to face life is to face it with a sneer. And that's how he looked at people that were very critical and weren't involved in trying to solve the problem. So uh, he said, a cynical habit of thought and speech, a readiness to criticize work, which the critic himself never tries to perform, an intellectual aloofness, which is not accept that will not accept contact with life realities. So basically just saying, hey, a person that sits back and criticizes is really not connected. They're aloof. They're kind of sitting back pointing the finger. 
And he says, he says, those kind of remarks are not of superiority, they're of weakness. So that was his takeaway. And then he went on to, to give the speech, the other part of the speech that really changed uh, history, really. And this is what he said. And I'm going to read it a little slow. And it's not because I have a learning disability, but I just want you to hear it because this is, is a very good, good speech. And it's, it's only what, about five or six sentences. But this part of the speech is anyway. He said, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without erring and, sh and shortcomings but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never Never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory or defeat. And that thing went wild. People went wild. He wasn't expecting it. He was like, you know, he, he was shocked. Uh, it got to the point where the, the, the impact it made in France, uh, the speech was turned into a pocket book and sold over 5,000 copies, like, like in five days. Uh, later, Nixon, when he was getting thrown out, he, he used that part of that speech in his resignation. Uh, it's been paraphrased in TED Talks. Uh, Nelson Mandela, before the 1995 World Cup, gave a copy of the speech to one of the captains on the soccer team. And by the way, they did win. Um, even uh, lately, Molly Cyrus, Liam Hemsworth, they have parts of the speech tattooed on their arm. So this, this thing is lived. And the words are powerful, but it's all about being in the game, not being a person that just sits back and criticizes, but is actually in the game. So if you got anything out of that so far, please comment. Please comment. Let me know in one or two words what you're thinking. Uh, I, I don't know if it's, the, I don't want to say the nerd in me, but I'm going to say it, the nerd in me. But when I read this, it changed my life because I was a person up until that point that was active in some things, but I wasn't really in the arena. I just did what I was told to do. Didn't have any passions that I really jumped on. I didn't have something that got me up in the morning that wasn't, uh, you know, a nine to five, something that really just was very like a, a burning fire in me. And once I read that, I was like, yeah, this is what it's going to be about for me. And what it was about for me was equipping people, was about leading people the right way. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the industry I was in, I saw all kind of things and a lot of it wasn't right. And I, I kind of took that approach. I was like, you know what? When I get my opportunity again, I'm going to make sure that we do this the right way. Because you can lead people and you can make money and you can still develop people. And they don't have to, those, those, those desires don't have to conflict with each other. So if I could get some comments, if anybody got anything out of that so far, please comment. Please comment. I'm going to wait a couple minutes. Hit your like button or comment in one or two words if you got something out of that. That speech was by uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Shar, are you over there? Mm -hmm. I wish I could take a picture, show the camera where Shar is. Shar's kicked back, got her laptop, got a blanket on her, uh, sitting over there doing what she do. Put little comments here and there. But usually we're in, a, in my office, which is a smaller room, so it's more intimate. Now I feel like I'm all alone over here by the tree, you know. So anyway, uh, we got one on, on, on Aunt Stephanie. But one thing I want to do, we, we read, the, read the speech, a part of the speech. I wanted to go back over a certain part of it. You know, he was really defiant in his distinction between the critic and those that are making things happen. I mean, he was like, hey, there's those, these are the two types of people. You got the people that are making things happen. You got the people that are sitting on the sidelines. 
He really paints a vivid picture of how the person looks that is making things happen. He says they're marred by dust, sweat, and blood. You know, they're out there. You know, he's just, you got to remember, these are war times back then. So it's like, hey, they paint this picture like this person is actually out there, you know, making things happen. He declares that they keep trying and they keep making mistakes. I thought that was powerful. He says this person is trying, but they keep making mistakes. He, he emphasizes that it's because you can't try hard at something and not make mistakes and have shortcomings. They come together. If you're trying hard, you're going to mess up and, and you're going to have shortcomings. And he said something that to me, if, if uh, I might make a quote and put it in my office somewhere, he says, there's no effort without error. There's no effort without error. He also says this person that is striving, he knows or she knows great devotions and great enthusiasms. So they experience these all time highs because they're doing something that's from the heart that they're passionate about. This person also best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if they don't achieve, then at least they fail while daring, daring greatly. And because of that, their place will never be with those timid, bitter, fearful souls who know neither victory or defeat. Very powerful, very, very powerful and moving speech that he gave that he never thought would have the kind of impact that some guy in Houston, Texas would be repeating it in 2021, over 111 years later. So very, it's, you can Google it. It's, it's out there. You, you'll see posters with it. Very moving speech is something that we do in the Elevate program. We talk about that, making sure that you're a participant, not a person that's sitting on the sidelines. Uh, any questions? Uh, Aunt Stephanie said, you're not working if you're not making a mistake. No one is perfect. True, true, true. What do y'all think about this in the arena? In the arena. Char, what do you think over there a mile away? Char? Yes. Hello. I'm, I'm in the arena, but I'm sitting down. <laughs> she said. So, uh, you know, my wife has a cupcake business and she did over 1,200 cupcakes. Was it 1,200 or 1,100? Uh, around 1,200 cupcakes in the last few days. So she's like, I'm in the arena laying down because <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> it was cut. Hey, Daryl, no problem, man. It's good to see you. So she's, she's uh, and we got to get together, man. Oh, man. I wish you would just make it easy on me and come to Houston. Don't make me work, man. I'm like, eh. but I, I will. We'll meet you halfway in, uh, I call it Ice Cream Town, the little town where the uh, Blue Bell is. But we can do something like that. You know, bring your wife and, and, and Char and I will come and we can meet out there or, or we'll, because we hardly ever go to Austin, but I want to, uh, I want to definitely hook up with you. It's been some, some years, so. Uh, but uh, Shara says, "True, she's in the arena. She's she's deep in the arena. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's deep in the arena." Uh, uh, Stephanie says, "Sometimes you uh, you get beat down by the arena. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what Shara's experiencing right now. I, I tell you what, I experience that every day. But I love it. I love that I'm in it. Uh, the insights you get, the character that's built, the maturity that's built, the trouble you stay out of." There's so many benefits to being in the arena. So uh, 731, I uh, wanted to make sure that I just tell you what's coming up uh, with the next five weeks of the Facebook. Uh, uh, week one is cyclochlorosis. That's next week, the hardening of your attitude. Week two, the one word we cannot escape, choice. The one word we cannot escape, choice. Week three, uh, a live interview with a successful entrepreneur. Week four, uh, this Generation, Part 1. Week 4 is This Generation, Part 1. And then Week 5 is This Generation, Part 2. You always hear it. Uh, this Generation, that. This Generation, this. We're going to talk about that. Uh, uh, definitely appreciate you guys coming on. I know we're at 731. Uh, you know our, our, we like to end it by saying be intentional. Focus on growth and elevate now. Please share. Please share. Uh, 
That's how this thing goes. Please share, and we appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks a lot. Fastest 30 minutes in social media.